everyone. Welcome back to another mind-bending episode. Today we're diving into one of the most fascinating and mind-blowing ideas out there. Simulation theory. This theory suggests that our entire reality, everything we experience, might just be part of an incredibly complex computer program, like something straight out of the Matrix. Yep, we're talking about the possibility that we're living in a simulation. Sound crazy? Well, you're not alone in thinking that. But what if it's not so crazy after all? Some serious thinkers, scientists, and philosophers are exploring this possibility, and today we're going to break it down. So get ready to question reality itself as we dive into simulation theory. Let's start with the basics. What is simulation theory? In simple terms, simulation theory suggests that everything we perceive, the entire universe, our world, and even ourselves, might be artificial. Instead of existing in a physical world governed by the laws of nature, we could be living inside a simulation created by an advanced civilization or intelligence. In this scenario, just like characters in a video game, we're unaware that we're part of a program running on some kind of hyper-advanced computer. This idea isn't just the plot of a science fiction movie, it's a philosophical and scientific hypothesis that's gained traction over the years, especially with the rise of AI and virtual reality technology. The question is, how do we know if our reality is real or if it's just an illusion? The concept of our reality being an illusion isn't new. It actually dates back to ancient philosophy. Plato's allegory of the cave is one of the earliest explorations of the idea that what we perceive as reality might just be shadows on the wall. In the allegory, prisoners are chained inside a cave, only able to see shadows cast by objects behind them. For these prisoners, the shadows are reality, but the true world exists outside the cave, something they cannot see or comprehend. Fast forward to modern times, and this idea took a high-tech twist with René Descartes, who famously said, I think, therefore I am. Descartes questioned the nature of reality, wondering whether an evil demon could be manipulating our perceptions to create an entirely false world. Replace the evil demon with a supercomputer, and you've got the foundations of simulation theory. But it was Nick Bostrom, a Swedish philosopher, who really popularized the idea with his 2003 paper titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Bostrom laid out a compelling argument that if an advanced civilization could simulate conscious beings, then there's a good chance we might be living in one of those simulations right now. His argument has sparked intense debate and led to serious consideration of the simulation hypothesis by scientists and thinkers alike. Okay, let's break down Bostrom's argument. He proposed that at least one of the following three statements must be true. 1. Almost all civilizations at our level of technological development go extinct before they reach the capability to create simulations of conscious beings. 2. If such civilizations do reach the point where they can create simulations, they are not interested in doing so. 3. We are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. Let's unpack this. If humanity, or some advanced civilization, ever reaches the point where we have the computing power to simulate entire worlds, with conscious beings who don't know they're in a simulation, it raises the question, why wouldn't they run these simulations? If they can, and if it's as easy as running millions of video games at once, it's logical to assume that simulations would vastly outnumber real realities. In that case, the odds of us being in the base reality are slim. We're probably just one of the many simulations running at any given time. It's a probability argument. If there are billions of simulated worlds and only one real one, the odds are that we're living in one of the simulations. Now let's talk about the technology. Could we ever develop computers capable of simulating an entire universe, complete with conscious beings? It sounds far-fetched, but technology is advancing at a mind-boggling pace. Look at how far we've come with virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Already, we can create incredibly detailed and immersive virtual worlds where players interact with AI characters. While today's VR is still in its infancy, just imagine where it could be in a 100 or 1,000 years. As quantum computing and AI continue to evolve, it's not unthinkable that one day a computer could simulate not just a game, but an entire universe, complete with people who believe they are alive and free-thinking. In fact, some scientists believe that given enough time, a civilization could simulate an entire cosmos, down to the atomic level. Here's where things get even more interesting. If you were inside such a simulation, 
you wouldn't be able to tell. Your senses, thoughts, and experiences would all be controlled by the rules of the program, and unless someone pulled back the curtain, you'd never know. Now, here's the million-dollar question. If we're living in a simulation, could we ever find out? Nice. Some theorists suggest that there might be subtle signs, kind of like glitches in the matrix, that could give us clues. For example, quantum mechanics is a field of science that sometimes seems to defy logic. The behavior of particles at the quantum level is strange, unpredictable, and doesn't always follow the rules we expect. Some have speculated that this might be evidence of the code of the universe behaving in ways similar to how glitches show up in computer programs. Others point to the speed of light as a possible limitation of the simulation. Just like how video games render only the areas you're actively looking at, the speed of light might be a boundary that prevents us from interacting with certain parts of the simulated universe in real time. However, even if there were glitches, would we be able to interpret them correctly? If we're inside the simulation, our understanding of reality is limited by the rules of the program, so it's possible we wouldn't be able to recognize a glitch for what it is. If we're living in a simulation, what does that mean for our lives? Does it change anything about how we should live or what matters? This is where the theory gets really philosophical. On one hand, if everything is simulated, does that make our lives meaningless? Are we just pawns in a game, following a pre-written script? It's a question that can lead to an existential crisis if you think about it too much. On the other hand, even if we're in a simulation, our experiences still feel real to us. We still feel joy, pain, love, and connection, and those emotions are real to us, even if the world around us is artificial. So, should it matter if we're in a simulation? Many philosophers argue that even if we're simulated, what we do still matters. We're still living our lives and making decisions that affect others in meaningful ways. There are also ethical questions. If we're simulated, are we being watched or controlled by whoever created the simulation? Do they care what happens to us? Or are we just part of an experiment, a program running its course without any intervention? Not, not everyone is on board with simulation theory, though. There are plenty of criticisms and reasons to be skeptical. Some argue that the computing power needed to simulate an entire universe, complete with billions of conscious beings, is so vast that it's beyond the realm of possibility. Even with future technology, it might simply be impossible to replicate the complexity of consciousness and reality. Others suggest that it's just another version of age-old philosophical debates about reality and illusion. After all, just because we can imagine something doesn't mean it's true. For some, simulation theory is simply a modern-day myth, an interesting idea, but nothing more. Now here's a twist to think about. If a civilization created a simulation that's as complex as our reality, what's stopping us from eventually becoming the simulators? As our technology advances, there's the possibility that one day, we'll be able to create our own simulations with beings that live in their own digital universe. If we ever reach the point where we can create realistic simulations of reality, then simulation theory might become even more likely, because once simulations exist, there could be layers of simulated worlds within other simulated worlds, like a cosmic Russian nesting doll of realities. So are we living in a simulation? Honestly, we don't know. And we might never know for sure. It's a fascinating idea that opens up all kinds of questions about reality, consciousness, and the limits of human understanding. What we do know is that simulation theory pushes us to think about the nature of existence in ways that challenge our everyday assumptions. Whether we're part of a grand simulation or not, one thing is certain. The quest to understand reality will keep us exploring, asking questions, and expanding our minds. That's it for today's episode, folks. Thanks for joining me on this wild journey through the world of simulation theory. Whether you're a believer, a skeptic, or somewhere in between, I hope you enjoyed thinking about what reality really means. Until next time, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, 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 o